Service Apollo Saturn Launch Control. We're now at the 15 minute mark, T minus 15 minutes and holding. Hold just uh, announced will be last for exactly two minutes, so we're continuing to look for a 3.50 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time liftoff. As we come out of this hole, the spacecraft will go to full internal power. Up to this point, it's been being supported by ground power as well as the fuel cells. Uh, approximately T minus one minute and 15 seconds in the count. Slayton will trip a couple of switches, which will bring the spacecraft batteries online when they will be used then in addition to the fuel cells and as a backup. We're starting at this time, uh, chill down on the second stage start tanks and thrust chambers. They'll be receiving that super cold liquid hydrogen, so it's necessary to condition them for that. FT-23, a computer run to ensure the guidance data has been properly received and the guidance computer has also been run. We're holding now at the T-minus 15 minute mark. Uh, expect to be picking up our count again shortly. T-minus 15 and holding. This is Kennedy Launch Control. Saturn launch control. We passed the 10 minute mark in the countdown. We do have one more hold. That's for five minutes, 24 seconds duration, and that will come at the four minute mark. Let's stand by now and listen to the astronauts as they're finishing up their checks in the spacecraft.
the Apollo Saturn launch control. We're at T-minus three minutes, 52 seconds, and counting. Everything proceeding okay, smoothly uh, at this time. Uh, launch operations uh, manager Paul Donnelly checked in with the crew on the uh, Astrocom launch circuit. He said, uh, Apollo, this is the launch operations manager. Tom, Deke, and Vance, the launch team wants you to know we saved the best till last. Good luck and Godspeed. And uh, astronaut Slate, uh, Stafford, said thank you all so much. Thanks for everything. Countdown continuing smoothly at this point. We'll be going on the automatic sequencer at the T-minus 3 minutes 7 second mark. We're approaching that time at this point. Once we get on that automatic sequencer, all actions in the count will be handled automatically by the sequencer. Mark T-minus 3 minutes 7 seconds and the launch sequence. Sequence has started. Each sequence now must take place at the right time and in the proper sequence, or it would be automatically cut off. We would get an automatic cutoff in the countdown. That did occur once on Apollo 17, where we had a cutoff at the T minus 30 second mark. T minus 45 minutes and counting. T minus two, two minutes, 45 seconds and counting. Everything continuing to move well. One of the first actions taken by the sequencer was terminating the liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen propellant. We'll be uh, pressurizing the tanks at this point. They're pressurized to ensure a smooth flow of fuel down to the engines during the powered phase of flight. The second stage LOX tank now has been pressurized and the first stage fuel tank has been pressurized. We should have pressurization on, on all fuel tanks by the 30-second mark in the countdown. We're approaching the two-minute mark at this point, approaching the two-minute mark in our countdown. Everything's continuing to run smoothly. Mark, T-minus two minutes, T-minus two minutes and counting. Events are coming closed now, tanks being pressurized. At one minute, 25 seconds, we'll look for a second stage fuel tank to be pressurized. We have a large status board here in the firing room which shows these events as they're taking place. First stage fuel tank now pressurized, T minus one minute, 40 seconds. At the T minus one minute, 15 second mark in the countdown, astronaut Deke Slayton will put two switches in the spacecraft to bring the spacecraft batteries online. These batteries will give added electrical power and also are a backup to the fuel cells. At the one minute mark, the water will start pouring onto the flame detector underneath the pad, and at 30 seconds, we'll uh, get water on the mobile launcher deck itself. Deke now has brought those uh, batteries online. T minus one minute, six seconds. The last action performed by the crew will be a T minus 45 seconds. And at that time, Tom Stafford will make a final guidance alignment. T minus 55 seconds. We'll be getting a switch to internal power shortly. All of the uh, tanks now pressurized, and we're switching to internal power. Stafford reports he has made the final GDP aligned. First stage, second stage, and instrument unit now on internal power. Approaching the 30 second mark in our countdown, water pouring onto the hang deflector now coming onto the uh, deck of the mobile launcher. Everything proceeding smoothly. We'll get a guidance release at the 17 second mark. 20 seconds. The engines will actually start. The engine sequence starts at 3.1 seconds in the countdown. We'll hold down till thrust builds up. 11. Engine 10, ready light on. 9, 10, 9 8, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 3 2, 2, Engine sequence start. 1, 0. Launch commit. We have a liftoff. All engines building up thrust. Moving out. Clear the tower. Roger, power clear. Roger, Tom, you got good thrust and all that. It ran out of money. Uh, Roger. I got a roll program. Yeah, she goes pitch program. We'll shake the lift off, but it's smooth as silk now. Okay. Saturn launch vehicle beginning, beginning a 45 second maneuver to the proper roll. Trajectory looking good.
pressure relieving as expected, coming up on the region of maximum dynamic pressure. And we're still uh, we're through max Q. Everything's still looking good. In your feet wet, on your way. At 30 seconds, still looking good. Six miles downrange. Trajectory very good. Okay, slide 30, onward trajectory looks beautiful. Right to concur, Tom, you're right on the money. Five minutes, 45 seconds. Flight Director Pete Frank getting another status report around the room and everything looking good. Houston, you're right on at six minutes. We'll get you to say, 
Three minutes, 40 seconds remaining in this burn. The launch vehicle continuing to pick over and uh, pitch over and pick up speed rapidly. 13,000 feet per second. Oh, is right velocity. This one. Okay, big thank you.
Congratulations all for a job extremely well done. I'm probably a lot more excited than you are, but anyway, it was fabulous. Thank you. And now I'm uh, particularly honored to present a very special guest for this mission, the ambassador from the Soviet Union, Mr. Dobrina. through the Apollo Range Instrumented Aircraft and Araya Aircraft on station uh, uh, south of Australia. And uh, we'll have uh, communications we expect uh, through that tracking aircraft. Yes. Over the uh, Araya, during uh, contact through Araya, uh, Capcom Dick Truly will be discussing with the crew a telemetry indication that uh, we got uh, post-launch uh, that indicates there may be a, a small bubble in the uh, uh, propellant supply module. Uh, this is an auxiliary propellant supply uh, for the reaction control system engines uh, normally brought on at uh, one hour 44 minutes. And uh, I truly will be advising the crew to defer uh, bringing that online if in fact uh, further checks show that there is a bubble in the supply line, a helium bubble, uh, the uh, supply module would simply be purged, uh, forcing the propellants and the bubble uh, out through the RCS engines. Uh, the concern about having a, a bubble, in fact, there is a helium bubble in there, is it in a critical burn as the bubble uh, entered the RCS reaction control system engines, uh, there would be a, a loss of thrust and uh, uh, a critical burn uh, where timing is, essence, if, is of the essence uh, could be affected. So before that module is used, uh, it is determined that, uh, in fact, we do have a, uh, a helium bubble in the manifold. Uh, would be purged. Okay, and we'll be standing by. Okay, 
about an hour and 42 minutes. Okay, yeah, we're kind of busy now. We'll pick it up there, Dick. Okay, no problem. A couple of quickies you can look at, Dick. Uh, we're running the high on suit dip here, a little over 70 degrees, and also the Michael E. Papp on the secondary loop is off scale high. Should be below 60. Okay, uh, Deke, we don't have data here, but we will be looking at those. Uh, I've got a couple of parameters I'm going to need to read out from you on also. Okay. See y'all later. Apollo Houston, Newfoundland for six minutes. Roger, Tom, uh, how do you read me? Uh, okay, be advised, uh, we're going to be sending one of our normal commands here to the booster to enable the extraction maneuver to occur uh, per the normal flight plan. Apollo Houston, uh, Tom, you're fading in and out, and I'm only getting about half the uh, your conversation. I'll call you. Uh, 
uh, one thing we wanted to get from you was the results of the EMS Delta V test that you're in. Okay, EMS Delta V test uh, was perfect. Roger manually. 
and will perform a rotation maneuver which will come about the end of the service. Based on the data given by via telemetric means, the pressure in the descent vehicle is 535.9 millimeters of mercury. In the orbital module, it's 540 and 2 tenths millimeters. The temperature of the air in the descent vehicle is 15.45 Celsius. And the orbital module is 20.2 tenths degrees Celsius. The regular seance communication will take place in 34 minutes through the Yuri Gagarin tracking ship. This is Moscow MCC out. Roger, looks good. Zero. This is Apollo Control. Two hours, 25 minutes into the flight of Apollo. Nine hours, 55 minutes since Soyuz launched this morning. And uh, we're less than a minute away from acquisition through a, an aircraft, a relay aircraft uh, over the Indian Ocean. And uh, further communications with the Apollo spacecraft some uh, heart rates for the Apollo crew during launch. Tom Stafford had a high of 130 and a low of 55. Command module pilot Vance Brand had a high of 114 and a uh, low of 60. Uh, docking module pilot Deke Slayton had a high of 123 and a low of 60. We should have acquisition momentarily for the next five minutes through the relay aircraft. Standing by. Apollo Houston through the Ra. How do you read? Roger, again, the uh, comm here is uh, pretty poor, so we're just standing by. Houston, we're 30 seconds from LOS around. Vanguard at 2 plus 43. This is Apollo Control. Loss of signal through the uh, Araya relay aircraft. Voice relay in the Indian Ocean. Four minutes away from reacquisition through tracking ship Vanguard for the final time this afternoon of the spacecraft Apollo. A, the first Apollo change of shift briefing with Flight Director Pete Frank uh, for 7.30 p.m. Central Daylight Time. The um, change of shift briefings for this mission will all be in the main auditorium at Johnson Space Center. As we get nearer to the uh, shift handover, We'll refine this estimate of uh, the time of the change of shift briefing. We'll leave the circuit up for the next uh, three minutes for the uh, acquisition through tracking ship Vanguard. At two hours, 40 minutes, Apollo ground elapsed time. Apollo control. Apollo Houston, Vanguard in five minutes. Roger. Apollo, the extraction was nominal. Super, Tom, uh, sounds real good, and if uh, somebody... Apollo, you still there? Yes, him. No, go ahead, Tom, uh, if somebody has a chance uh, during this pass, uh, I'd like to get the BMAG uh, GDC IMU comparison results. Okay, and as I said before, uh, we're not going to do the PSM uh, activation here. We'll uh, pick it up later.
Okay, I'm standing by to copy. seconds. 